Alright, so welcome back. Today I'm going to be working on this trying class 37 that I got recently in a lot of trains. So, without any further ado, let me take it over to the track and show you how the thing runs. Alright, so I've got the class 37 set up on the track, so I'll give the thing some power. It does run, but it is quite loud, and it is a little bit stuttery. And it's an interesting model, so I just want to work on it and get an interesting video out of it. So first, before we can get into anything, let's get this unit apart. Which, you might notice, I have finally uh, splurged and I bought myself an engine cradle. Which should help quite a bit. And of note, I've heard that these specific Class 37s can be quite difficult to get apart. Or not get apart, but to put back together. So I'll just have to keep an eye on that uh, later on in the video. And I think for the rest of this, I can move the shell out of the way. And for the time being, I think I can get rid of the engine cradle. First of all, I do kind of want to work on this rear truck, because I think this is where a lot of my squeaking noise is coming from. So I just kind of want to get in here, give it a little bit of fresh oil. I don't think I need to clean these wheels, since they are just plastic and don't pick up any power. I need to press this apart just a little bit to get this middle axle to roll freely. There. Let's see if I can actually spread it a little bit apart here. This middle axle just seems a little bit oddly stiff. I don't really understand why. Weird is that none of these axles do really want to stay engaged. So I might have to use just a little bit of super glue later on on these things, or a little plastic cement or something, but I'll probably end up doing that near the end, so I think we'll come back to that. And I was also just looking at this, and it looks like there is a specific way to get this motor out without unscrewing it, so I'm going to see if I can follow these instructions and actually get it off. And that worked pretty well, so I can move that aside. And now I can try and figure out this whole drive system, which is quite unusual. I don't think I've seen <clears throat> anything like this before. So I'm going to take a second to just look this thing over and see if I can figure out anything important, anything that needs to stay the way it is, or that I can mess up putting it back together, and then I'll return. Alright, so what it looks like to me is that these gears are directional. They need to go in in opposite directions. And it looks like just based on this, the teeth need to be angled up to the left. I don't know how much that makes sense to you, but hopefully if I need it, I can rewatch it and that'll help me. And it looks like I need to unscrew these four screws here. And I brought the engine cradle over just so I have a little bit of a easier surface to work on for this step. Well, that's interesting. I think this is about as much as I can get this apart for the time being. I don't want to get that engine cradle all messed up on the first day. So I think for now I'm just going to clean off these uh, gears and axles and weights here and this little bottom piece, and then I'll come back to this whole motor assembly.
All right, so I took a little bit of a brief break and I just used some plastic cement on these axles, which hopefully should help them dry together. And then I can do a little bit more work on those later once that dries. And now all I need to do is just clean out this whole motor case, which there's quite a bit to do. Someone really over oiled this thing and it shows. So I need to clean up this whole truck. I need to clean the worm gears, the commutator and the contacts. All right, so I think this motor now looks pretty good. However, this one resistor thing, I don't know exactly what it is, did break off. And it looks like it just broke at the solder joints because you can kind of see where it was on there. So I might need to solder that back on. I'm gonna uh, put this whole thing back together and if it doesn't cause any issues, I'm gonna leave it alone for now. However, if it does cause some issues, I'll probably go in and re-solder this back on. So I'm gonna assemble this truck and then off camera, I will probably just test this thing out and make sure everything's fine. And if not, I'll be soldering this back on if I can figure out what way it goes. Alright, so I just gave the thing a little bit of the test run and everything seems to be good. I'm not going to bother with that resistor because I don't even know what it did or why it was there. And it appears to be just fine without that resistor. So for now, I'm just not going to worry about it. This drive system already seemed really overcomplicated, so it's kind of nice to just remove an added layer of complication. So if someone knows what it did, I'm going to save it. And if it does something crucial that I'm somehow forgetting about, please let me know, because even though this video will come out in a while, I will still save the parts. Alright, so I'm just going to do one final test with this drive, and then we'll work on this back truck a little bit more, and get the whole thing back together. Alright, so everything with the whole front drive seems good. I'm just going to add a little bit more oil to these rear axles, because they still seem to be just a little bit snug. So hopefully that'll make them roll a little bit more freely, and it'll prevent some of the chirping that I've been having with these. It's not perfect, but that is a lot better. I also did off camera because I forgot I oiled the motor bearings on this thing, and it all should be good and dandy now. So I can put this all back together. And I have to remember we had this weird clip I am glad that Hornby, or Trying, or whoever actually made the model, did actually put the little label in here, because it is quite a helpful thing for, uh, for me working on it. So now I think I can get the body back over here, and we can finally put the shell back on, and hopefully that doesn't give me too much of an issue. Alright, so we should be able to, once I adjust this a little bit, 
we should be able to take this thing over to the track and see how it runs now, which hopefully should be a lot better than before. All right, so I've got the thing all set up on the track, so let me give it some power. And there it goes. It's not the quietest thing in the world, but it's a lot quieter than it was when I started, which is good. It is also kind of an odd drive system, so I don't know what might be making noise and what might not be. I've also got two coaches that I can put behind the thing, which I might do in a minute. So after it completes this lap, I'll let it run in reverse for about a lap or two. It's almost maybe a little bit smoother in reverse. So I'll go grab the two cars that I got with this thing and we'll run them around for a lap or two. So that'll be it for this video and thanks for watching.